One of the things that can be difficult for a hairstylist is communicating to their guest why they can or can't have the color that they're looking for, especially with fashion colors, vivid colors. They've been popular for a long time now, and they're only growing and becoming honestly more socially acceptable. Certain office environments where you wouldn't wear fashion colors previously, uh, where maybe they wouldn't be allowed, now they're just um, normalized. It can be a very time-consuming and expensive process to achieve and upkeep, and so a lot of people try to achieve and maintain them on their own. But I'm going to share with you why a lot of people do not get the results that they think they're going to get with their vivid colors. So if hair is, is your canvas and hair color is your paint, we have to think about it in those terms, knowing that our paint isn't opaque. It's not like painting a wall where we're gonna get full coverage. Even when you're painting a wall, sometimes you have to do several coats. The color of your canvas in combination with the color of your paint is going to determine your final color. Take for example, construction paper. Now, if I were using actual paint on my construction paper, you're not gonna see a whole world of difference between those stripes. Because there's so much coverage in actual paint, the, canvas, the color of the canvas matters less. But think of hair color more like a marker. And if I color on this canvas with a marker, I definitely get a different result. Look at the red and the yellow compared. Red on red, believe it or not, is actually a little bit duller. Red over the yellow looks brighter, but also more orangey. So how does this apply to our hair color? Here's a board that I started. I'm not actually quite done yet, but these are So Color Cult colors. You can see my, my untreated hair is over here. So I have some very light blonde and some sort of medium orangey blonde. And each of these colors are colored on both of those colors. And let's take a look at this blue one right away. If I color that blonde hair blue, I get a really bright result. But if I color that sort of pre-toned level eight hair blue, look how much duller it turns out. Sometimes that can work to our advantage. Like take our this blooming orchid color, for example. On the nearly white hair, it looks it looks bright, but it looks nearly hollow. It definitely looks darker and richer on that darker hair. As a colorist, it's very important for me to consider what color I'm working with, to consider my destination. How dark, how rich do I want it to be? How bright, how vibrant do I want to be? So how light do I need to lift the hair and visualize what color canvas that color needs to be on to get the desired result? Sometimes people are lifting their hair too light to get the, the color they want. Sometimes they're just lifting it unnecessarily light and often they're not lifting it light enough. So just remember the color of your canvas matters and you really need to consider it, visualize it before you proceed with your fashion color. Even with natural colors, the color of your canvas matters. Permanent color can lift natural pigment as well as deposit at the same time. Demi-permanent color is just meant to deposit. Semi-permanent color, like your fashion colors, is meant to just deposit. But you can even use construction paper as a tool to help you visualize your final result. For example, this is Matrix So Color Sync Neutral Violet. I colored a white swatch with the neutral violet so I could really see the background color. How violet is this? How is this going to affect the hair at a level seven? So if I bleach hair, to seven, we can see that there's a fair amount of orange, lots of red tones in there. You know, if I were toning at a six with a level seven, I would have quite a bit of red contributing. If I were toning down an eight, it would be closer to the gold and seven would be closer to that sort of pure orangey. So how would that affect my final outcome? You can use construction paper to visualize this because the color of the construction paper reflects onto the swatch. So we can see how that smooths it out with the yellow reflecting onto that violet swatch. 
It almost makes it look less purple. Kind of mellows it out a little bit. It gives me a good idea of what this would look like on hair with those gold tones in it. If you remember our color theory, the complementary color of yellow is violet. So if I have a neutral with a little bit of violet in it, it's just going to help that hair look a little bit more neutral. On an orange, can you see how the reflection of the orange kind of changes the tone of the neutral violet? And then check it out with the red. To me, the neutral violet looks so much pinker on that red background. Kind of a, like a rosy neutral sort of color now, rather than like violet. Why? Well, violet is a secondary color made out of red and blue. So if I take red and blue and add more red, it's just gonna shift it more to the red side of violet than the blue side. So we could apply this same thing to our swatch books as well. If I take my So Color Sync, swatches. This is Matrix's demi-permanent color. These are my neutral swatches and we tend to tone lighter hair more than we tone darker hair. So what would happen to warm hair with yellow if I put it level 10 over it? As I see the, the yellow reflect onto that level 10 swatch, it doesn't really cool it down much. It just makes it look a little bit warmer. If I use a level 10 neutral on yellow hair, um, it's still going to be warm at the end of the day. And if I'm trying to cool it down, well, let's try an ash tone. Now, if I put that ash on the yellow hair, look how that ash tone changes. It looks silvery. It looks bright. When I put it next to the yellow, it kind of warms it up and makes it look to me more like that 10 end swatch we had, which is exactly what that ash is built for. It has the complementary colors for yellow in it, which means it's going to neutralize it. If I put a 10 ash on level 10 yellow hair, if all goes right, I'll end up with 10 neutral hair, not 10 ash. If I want to get the 10 ash result, I need something even cooler, or I need to add some sort of a booster or something to the color to make it even cooler. So the color of your canvas matters, and you can use construction paper or any other colored fabric or paper to help reflect the light onto your swatches and help you visualize what the final results are going to be. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like what you saw and you want to see some more, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. Feel free to share with any of your nerdy friends. Click the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Let me know what else you want to hear about. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.